truth is I'm tired Options are few I'm trying to pray But where are you? I'm all churched out Hurt and abused Ooh, I can't face What's left to do? Truth is, I'm weak, no strength to fight, no tears to cry, even if I try. But still, my soul refuses to die. Mm -hmm. One touch will change my life Take me to the key I don't have much to breathe My heart is torn in pieces It's my offering Lay me at the throne And leave me there to gaze upon your glory, sing to you this song, take me to the key. Truth is, it's time to stop playing these games. We need a word for the people's pain. So Lord, speak right now, let it pour like rain, we're desperate, we're chasing after you, oh, no rules, no religion, cause I made my decision to run to you, the healing. My heart is torn in pieces It's my offering Lay me at the throne Oh Lord, to gaze upon your glory Sing to you this song Take me to the
Yes, ma'am. You remember that day that you called old Chris Brown down to Dr. Walker's office? Chris Brown, you remember that? Man, we went down there. Barry was suffering from something related to COVID. His mind and what he said didn't always line up. And I saw this wife stand before me and Chris, and she said, I believe in God for something for him. And every time I see him, first of all, I want to thank you for a persevering faith. A faith that don't give up, it don't shut up, it don't let up until it gets to the king, until it touches the hem of his garment. But every time I see your husband, I think about what God's done. Thank you so much. We love you and thank God for you. And uh, putting your hope in God in a time that's difficult. Man, I'm telling you, God's got a word for you today. He wants to encourage you from his word. He knew you were going to be here in spite of the snow. And I want you to do what little Leighton did that morning. And I want you to listen for him. And I want you to respond to him. Let him touch you this morning. You're going to be here as long as I keep you, so go ahead and strap in. But I want to tell you something. It reminds me again of a wife whose husband was in the hospital. And you don't know this man, but he's not the same when his wife ain't around. And they kept him day after day, and I see him in here this morning. I see another husband in here this morning that's lost his life love. And I want to encourage you that God's got a word for you, that he won't quit on you, that he won't give up on you, that he'll help you every step of the way. And I want to say something to you, church. Put your faith in a God who lives, not in a culture that listens to eggs are good, eggs are bad. Milk is good, milk is bad. Masks are good, masks are bad. I'm telling you, we've had enough of a word from man. We need to get a word from God. Would you hear God's word today? Would you stand? Let's ask God to bless his time in his word toward our hearts. Father, we bow before you today. And just like that song said, we're coming to the king. And we need to get a word from you. And I thank you that your word is enough. I thank you for the strength that gets us through the valley and over the hills of life, through death and discouragement and disappointment and disease. You never change. Speak, Lord, for your children are listening. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Our text for the morning is Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. And Jesus went away from there, Galilee, and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, send her away. She's crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. May God bless his word. Would you please be seated? You see in this gospel that Jesus is always on the move, traveling, teaching, baptizing, uh, walking on the water, um, and he's going to a, an area, and if you would picture Galilee on the, on the map of your mind, it, he would be going to a northwest area. As a matter of fact, this area, uh, Tyre and Sidon, was uh, bordered on the north, and it was frequently, frequently condemned by the Old Testament prophets. You might say this, have you ever heard of the Hatfields and the McCoys? They were a people that had a, a deep-seated resentment for each other. And over the days, because of this region and its people, these Phoenicians or Canaanites were the ones that, 
that Saul fought against. There were ones that David dealt with. And so through the ages, there had been some deep resentment of this region and its people. So how is it that this Canaanite woman, which we would consider to be a pagan, by pagan I meant that they often spoke Hebrew, they often spoke Aramaic, but they were pagan. They believed in the God of the trees, the gods of the fields, and they had erected things to fertility goddesses, and they were pagan to the core. So how is it that this pagan woman comes to Jesus? Well, I tell you, there's something implied in this text that I think we need to understand today. We need to understand that this woman had heard of him. Through all his healings and preaching and and all the things that he was doing, the word was out. And she heard of him. Somewhere and somehow, we don't know how she heard about Jesus. Uh, I don't know how you heard about Jesus. I know how I heard about Jesus. Have you heard about Jesus? In chapter 1 of Romans, the Bible says it this way. Actually, chapter 10. And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? Now, you ought to put those two together. Preachers are always sent. Whether it's in the supermarket and you're witnessing to somebody, but you're sent by God. As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith, your faith, comes through hearing and hearing through the Word of God. The Word of Christ. Have you heard? Because she heard. And even though that she was a a Canaanite, one outside the church of Israel, God's uh, chosen people, she heard. The songwriter puts it this way. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cry, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. See, this old pagan woman in the region in which she lived, she had heard some things about Jesus, but she hadn't just heard, she believed. See, Anybody can hear. The demons can hear. The Bible says that they've heard and feared. But it's a different thing to hear and believe. She heard and received unto her. She heard and believed. John 1, 12, and this is the verse that I mentioned in the baptismal pool. I believe Jesus is calling as much today as he ever has in any century ever. Now, a lot of people don't believe that. They think God's uh, grown quiet, that he's fallen asleep, that he's no longer calling. But I don't believe that. Now, we might have fallen asleep as far as receiving him, but he has not fallen asleep as into calling us. Look what it says. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Verse 13. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I want you to notice something when you hear about Him and you believe in Him. It creates something in you. As a matter of fact, this morning I was in my office doing something that I love to do. I wish I could do it every week. I told Chris Brown that we'd have to get a special thing from Sandy Springs Water because we'd be using more water than any Baptist church, but we'd be baptizing somebody every single week. And the mama testified, Brittany of Layton, she said, I've seen a change in her. See, when you believe, then something happens to you. When you believe in the name, you've heard him, then you begin to seek after him. Look what it says in verse 22 and 23, and behold, a Canaanite woman from that region. What's that verb there? She came out. 
She didn't just hear and receive. She was seeking after him. She came out and was crying. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. Just leave it up there. I want to tell you one story. I was in a barber shop not too long ago, and I was sitting before a... I better not tell you. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she's crying out after us. Notice, first of all, the verb in the sentence, came out. It means to, to go out, to, to seek after. And, and then implied here, it says, She came out and was crying. I'm going to tell you, don't ever forget that crying out to God, to a God who has ears and hears six billion people across this land, He'll hear your prayer. Don't ever quit coming to Him. Don't ever quit seeking Him. Don't ever quit crying out to Him. That's a persevering faith. That's a faith that's alive. That's a faith that's seeking after God. See, she knew the Lord from the law. She, she, she addressed Him as Son of David. That's an Old Testament term. As a matter of fact, the New Testament was not even written at this time. Isn't that something? Did you know that? It was probably 30 years or, or maybe even 60 years before the New Testament was put together. It was a testimony of what Jesus had done, what people have heard and what they had seen and what they realized. She sought after Him. I wonder how long her daughter had been oppressed by a demon. See, we don't use that terminology anymore. We're too medical. We're too scientific. We don't think that demons oppress people anymore. Listen, friend. The Satan who was in the garden, who taunted Job, who roams to and fro throughout the earth seeking whom he may destroy, is as alive today as he was then. You can tell something about him because his spirit is always lying. He'll tell you something opposite what God tells you. Many people today say, well, God can't help you. You need to go somewhere else to get you some help. Or I've heard it put this way. God gave you a mind. God also gave you a heart. A heart to trust. A heart to persevere. A heart to endure through the fog of a disease. Believing on Jesus who healed touches she sought after him listen church I want to encourage you put your hope in the Lord young or old or wherever you're at in your life you put your trust in him he'll never let you down he'll never not work out his plan in your life it's said this way in a song by mercy me even if you don't save me, blessed be your name. See, that's, a, that's believing in the name. That's believing in God past what you think ought to happen. Young Wilbur Force, who was in the parliament and was discouraged one night in the 1790s, Wilbur Force was one who saw early that the mistreatment of people based on their size their culture or their color was wrong before God. And I'm going to say the same thing that's true now was true then. And I want to say to you, church, if you look at people differently based on what they've been, who they are, or their color, you have not heard the truth. Jesus loves the little children. All the little children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. That's some good theology. He was frustrated. He was discouraged. He had been battling for 10 long years, telling idiots that they were wrong in what they viewed other people to be, and they would not hear. Their hearts were hardened, and he became discouraged. He opened his Bible, and a small piece of paper fell out. True story. Wilbur Force read the letter. It was from one of the Wesley boy preachers. And it said this, listen, unless 
the divine power has raised you up. I see not how you can go through your glorious enterprise in opposing that, in quote, in uh, parentheses, abominable practice of slavery, which is the scandal of religion, of England, and of human nature. Unless God has raised you up for this very thing, you will be worn out by the opposition of men and devils. But if God be for you, who can be against you? I want to remind you something, church. Listen, you might have some oppressed people in your family. You might be going through some difficult times. You might be sad and down and mourning. But I'm going to tell you something. You place your hope and your faith in a living God who loves you, who is working in you and through you for the glory of His name. Don't give up. Endure. One old time preacher said it this way. She therefore, this woman here, this pagan Canaanite, she therefore cried out eager to get help and kept insisting. But she was ignored. Not that mercy might be denied, but that desire might be enkindled. In other words, she didn't quit. She didn't give up. She didn't say, I've said something to him and I'm going to quit. She kept on insisting. She kept on crying. She kept on crying for mercy. I'm telling you, I'm thankful for a mom. And I hope you had one. I hope you'll be one that cries out no matter what the condition, no matter where your children are, no matter what they're going through, no matter what you've experienced in your life, I'm going to tell you there's a God who hears your prayer. And He might be not answering it today, but He might answer it tomorrow. One of the most encouraging things, I did a funeral yesterday, and there was a lady, she was 96 years old. She quit coming to this church about, about 12 months ago. It was right before the pandemic. And I called her. I hadn't seen her in a while. I said, hey, Maddie, how come you're not here? She said, well, I can't drive anymore on Highway 187. It's so busy. But when I went into her home, I saw a Bible that was worn. It had paper towels placed in little markers. You know why? Because that lady through the 70 years she was in this church, she didn't quit. She didn't give up. She didn't move on. Her eyes weren't on the preacher. They weren't on the people. They were on the one who gives the promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through the ages, let His praises ring. Oh, I want you to know. I want you to know, mamas and daddies, that your kids might be in a far field. They might be oppressed. The difficulties in your life might be like never before. But keep on crying. Keep on calling. Keep on believing in a God who made the world and made a way for us to come to Him. This lady heard, she sought, and her faith in God persevered. Look at verses 24 through 27. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before Him saying, Lord, help me. And He answered, it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Now, I, I love you, and y'all might let me go after this, but I'm going to tell you something. One of the problems today I see in the church is we don't have the right position before God. We've done the opposite of what John the Baptist said. John the Baptist said, I need to decrease. I need to get a little bit smaller now. But most of us Americans, we believe we need to get a little bit bigger now. We need to have our way, and it needs to be microwave. But I want you to notice the position of this lady. The Bible says that she knelt. That bowing is a sign of submission. It's a sign of faith. It's a sign of surrender. It's a sign that when everything's going wrong, that God's still got a plan. And that you can trust Him. Let me testify. No, I better not. 
Listen to me, please. Faith in the living God allows us to persevere regardless of the timing. Regardless of the timing. See, oftentimes we want it here and we want it now. Our hope ain't in time. Our hope is in Him. Our hope ain't in circumstances. Be they good or be they bad. Our hope is in Him. We bow before His hope, His help, in life and in death, in difficulty or oppression. But I want you to notice something about this text, and and, and I want you to be careful. Do you know what the disciples said when they saw this old pagan woman? I wonder if she had some pagan jewelry on. You ever seen people like that? Or wonder, have you seen the new fad you put? Now, no offense if you have this. God bless you. You're braver than I am and smarter than I am. But they put a ring in their ear and they keep getting it bigger and bigger. And then next thing you know, it's like a big old hole. It, it's sort of cool looking. I think, man, you could put a coat on that or hang a jacket. or I mean, there's all kind of uses, I think, for that. I'm not sure exactly what it means. No, I, I don't mean to make fun of people. I'm just saying that everybody looks different. Some are fat, some are bald, some are black, some are white. Some have cool clothes, some have old clothes. Some wear skinny suit. Some wear fat boy suit. May I say something to you? Don't beat up on the disciples because they saw the wrong things because God was still working with them. Somebody came up to me at this funeral yesterday. I love funerals. I mean, not, not that people are leaving because I love Maddie, but, but that it's just a time to see God working in people's lives. Well, Maddie had a sister. Her name was Virgin. And it said that sometimes they would butt heads like old Billy Goats. And so the people, I was talking about heaven, and the people said, oh, they're going to be butting heads in heaven. I said, let me tell you something. They might have butted heads here, but they ain't no head butting in heaven. And I'll tell you something, be careful how you look at people when they make mistakes and they look at people wrongly and you judge them wrongly. Because they might just have some flesh in them that's one day going to come out when they get a brand new body that doesn't have no flesh in it. So be careful on looking down on people who make mistakes in the Bible. Look, be careful on looking at people who've made mistakes in your life. I need to do better. Some thought she was a nuisance, a problem, someone to be ignored and ushered away. But Jesus didn't look at her that way. He listened and answered her and saw her value, her problem, and he showed mercy. He showed mercy. And I'll tell you something, child of faith. If there's anything we ought to have in our pocket of characteristics, it ought to be mercy. The hymn writer put it this way. Mercy there was great, and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. I'm going to tell you something as a Christian. You've received more mercy than you deserve. And we ought to have a bucket full of it, shedding it across this nation that we love. Wouldn't it be great if they begin to see us as a merciful people? Have a merciful people that didn't see the the error in other people, but saw the value. And then verse 28. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. One of the most beautiful things I see is that that work of grace. And you know what? You might be dealing with children or grandchildren or family members or neighbors that hadn't received that grace. And I want to ask you to continue to cry. Continue to believe in the one true God. There's a story told of a, a man. He's one of my heroes. He, his ministry was one of looking after orphans. The Bible, uh, it is said, not the Bible, it is said that he ministered to 10 
thousand orphans in his life. He told the story of having five friends that he prayed for to be saved. The first friend, he got saved just after a few months. The next one, after ten years. Can you imagine praying and crying out to God for ten years? Are you willing? Do you have that kind of faith in God? That you pray for ten years? The third and fourth one, after 25 years they were saved. And after 52 years of praying, he died. And then the last one came to faith in Christ. You know, this is a short time slot, this passage, but I want to tell you something. I think it presents the picture of a persevering faith. Crying out to God, even if He don't answer today. Crying out to God tomorrow and the day after for this country, for its condition. Believing that God's going to do something like He did in Nineveh. Believing that one day God's people are going to turn to Christ again. And not muck up our lives with all these things that, that don't matter. She heard of Him. She sought Him. Her faith in Him persevered. And her faith is fruitful. Maybe you could think about it this way. There are some people in our country and in our communities, in our families, that maybe God put them there so that we'd have the faith needed to call on Him for them. To persevere. To never give up. To show them mercy whether they deserved it or not. Have you ever thought you've been planted like a tree by the water, placed by God where you're at? To give fruit, shade, to make a difference in the kingdom of God. Jesus listened to her cry for mercy. Jesus didn't look down on her. He answered her questions. He gave to live them. And her faith was admired by Jesus. What about your faith? Who have you placed your faith in? What is God saying to you today? What is your response to Him? Everyone standing, every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, I thank You so much for this Word. And I pray, Lord, Your will might be done. That Your name might be known.